today's lesson, we're going to be discussing similar and congruent. We're specifically going to relate this to polygons, but it's a basic concept with all kinds of shapes. And we're going to carry this into three dimensional solids eventually. Similar or congruent. So obviously congruent is equal. We know that. What does similar mean? If shapes are similar, then their side lengths are proportional. Now you may have heard the words out of proportion or not proportional, but maybe not understood what they meant. So I have a, a little demo. One second, I'm going to pause the video and get this ready. Okay, let's do a new share. And we're going to look at a good example of things out of proportion. So we have a picture of two kids studying. And if we simply take the picture and make it wider, you see how now the kids look funny. They're out of proportion now. And you can tell by looking at them. By the same token, what if we made this taller without stretching it wider. Now they're out of proportion vertically. To keep this figure in proportion, you have to make it wider at the same rate that you make it taller. So as it gets taller, for them to stay looking normal, it also has to get wider. All dimensions have to change. Could you imagine if I only changed the bottom width of this and I made this look like a trapezoid? Now I can't do this on the software that I'm working on, but what if I just stretched this bottom so that I took this picture and I made it be this shape? I left the top edge and I stretched the bottom edge. Well, their tops of their heads might look normal, but their bodies at the bottom would get wider. And I would no longer have a square, but I would have a trapezoid. So it would not be similar at all. A trapezoid is not similar to a square. If you take this figure, the baby, and you keep it. in proportion, so let's bring this over here. Let's put a second one. See how those are congruent, they're an exact copy. The dimensions of the side and the top are the exact same. This one, however, is an enlargement of the one on the left. These are similar. They're the same picture. They're similar images. Their proportions are the same. That means if this one had a top of five, then the top up here would be 10. Could be 10, could be 15. But what if this was a four? Then to know that these are similar, this one would be eight. So they're in proportion. Everything is twice as big. So the scale factor on this, this particular image, is one to two. The little one is the one, and the big one is double the little one. And we could even make a, another image, maybe in between there, that is one. To one and a half. 
maybe it would be seven and a half by six. We could have that middle image. So the scale factor tells you what did you multiply the little one by to get the big one. And the proportions are always the same in similar figures. Similar figures are proportional, okay? Now let's go back to our examples, our lesson. And let's apply this to some things that are geometric. What I want to know is if these two shapes are proportional, You can't ever tell by looking at a picture. We know this. So let's put some measurements here. So we have a 12 and a 12. We have eight and eight. Then we have 12 and 24. What we want to know is when we look at the ratios, of one figure to the other, do we get the same? Are they identical ratios? Are the proportions the same? This is when I talked to you a time back about little over big. So little over big is a rule that you can just keep to yourself when you're checking proportion so that you keep things in the same order. It's kind of like labeling your points and your distance midpoint and slope formula, point one, point two. It's just a rule to keep you on track. It's not, you're not gonna hear this in textbooks or things like that, it just helps you. And by all means, when you see examples of ratios on tests, they're not gonna always do the little one on the top. For us, it just helps us checking if we do little over big. So we're gonna check these sides. So the corresponding sides, and we remember this from our parallel lines and transversal, that side corresponds to that side, and this side corresponds to that side. So we're gonna do little over big, eight over 12, and we're gonna do 12 over 24, and we want to see if those are equal. How do we simplify this fraction? Well, you don't have to remember these. I have got to get that arrow off the screen. You don't have to remember these and how to do these because you have your calculator now that will do them for you. But what we want to know is, are these equal ratios? Translate that, simplify, and are they equal? So we're gonna put that eight over 12 into our calculator and 12 over 24 into our calculator. See if it gives us the same ratio. 8 over 12 and 12 over 24. N over D, 8, directional pad down, 12. 8 over 12 simplifies to 2 thirds. Now, N over D, 12, directional pad down, 24. That's 1 half. One ratio simplifies to 2 thirds, and one ratio simplifies to one half. So eight over 12 equals two thirds and 12 over 24 equals one half. Are those the same? No, they're not the same. Those figures are not similar. 
If they were similar, the ratios would be the same. So let's ask ourselves, what would we need for dimensions to have a similar figure? Same exact shape. What height would make them similar? How could we change the big one to make these similar? And we'll do this in blue. So if we were going to edit this measurement, what would it need to be so that they were similar? We'll keep our width. We're going to keep this one. And we're only going to change the 24. What's the scale factor between 8 and 12? The scale factor of the width is 2 to 3. Two to three. So we have 12 over X should equal two over three. We need the same ratio. Well, what did we, how do we get from two to 12? Let's just look at this. And this is kind of going back to where you got common denominator. And when you looked at common factors and greatest common multiples and that kind of a thing. From two to 12, don't we multiply by six? Yeah. So if we need these ratios to be the same, guess what the three has to do? It's the same thing. We need to have three multiplied by six over on our height. What would that be? If our height was 18, we would have similar figures. So if we no longer had 24, but instead we had 18, then the figures would be similar. 18 would make it work. So we got rid of the 24 and we had 18. Yes, now we're similar. 18 is similar, 24 is not. Why is 18, 12 by 18, a similar figure? Because this, in this one, the ratio is two to three. And these ratios of little over big have to be the same. So on your worksheet, you're going to have questions just like that. Are they similar or not? And what side length would make them similar? Some of these you're not going to be given a side length, then you have to find the missing one. It's exactly what we just did. So let's look at an odd little polygon. that one and this one I'll try to draw them the same that one and that one and let's put some measurements with this so we have 10 and we have 10 and we have five we have five we have seven and we have a missing what missing side length if you know these are similar? So you're given these two polygons are similar. Find the missing side length. 
Well, there's a conditional statement here, and it's this. If two polygons are similar, then their side lengths are proportional. Another way you can say that is the ratios of their side lengths are equal. When you put little over big in your calculator, it simplifies to the same fraction. That's common terms. Little over big equals the same thing when we simplify it in our calculator. Well, let's look at that. Little over big. So let's connect them. Little over big. Little over big. We'll put five over 10 in your calculator. And then we're going to have seven over X in the calculator. Four question mark. Five over 10, use your N over D button, put that right into your calculator. And what does that equal? That is one over two. Now let's look at this and figure out what did that mean? How did we get from here to here? And how do we get from here to here? Well, that was a times five on both of those. Okay, what do we know about our other measurements? Well, we know it needs to turn into one over two if they're gonna be proportional. We're told that they're similar, so we know that's got to be equal. Now let's work it backwards. How'd you get from there to there? Times seven. That must be exactly what you need to do on the bottom. Times seven. So seven over 14 would be your ratio, that means your missing side length is 14. And this pretty much concludes your lesson over similar and congruent. So just know if you had this measurement on this one, pause the video if you don't have all these written down. So I wanna talk just a minute, the ratio of my measurement. Move this off of my screen. If given these measurements, Are the figures similar? No, they're not similar. They're equal. So there's the difference. Congruent, everything is the same. Similar, everything is proportional. It's important to just note that before you get started. So you're gonna show, uh, upload, pictures of your handwritten notes from this video. You're going to show all work on paper from your worksheet and upload the pictures. You're going to use homework help for anything that you struggle. And last, very last, after you've gone to homework help and make sure you have all the answers, put your multiple choice answers into the Google form. All right, I'll see you in the next lesson.